everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Just a quick and dirty video today. Um, wanted to do an experiment. I have no idea if this is going to work. If I post it, it probably worked, at least in some degree. So I'm going to be attempting to fix this scratch dust cover of this beautiful SLDL1 with some Meguiar's Scratch X. I've seen some YouTube videos that this um, compound, it, there's like a, a micro abrasive mixed with a polishing agent does wonders on light scratches. And kind of the, the metric is if you can't feel it with your fingertip, then it's about the right size of scratch for this solution. So we're gonna give it a shot. Um, I have two cloths. I'm gonna be using one of these uh, that came with the Spin Clean to put on the formula and then this microfiber cloth to get it off. And I'll show you that process based on what I've learned. And hopefully we see a strong before and after. I'm a little bit nervous. This dust cover does not really come off. You can see the scratches there, by the way. Um, it's permanently attached as part of the turntable, as you can see back here. And then there's this piece back here, which definitely needs some of this compound on there as well, that has all these little channels and nooks and crannies. So I have to be careful. So without further ado, go ahead and open it up and put some on and um, yeah I'm, I'm a little nervous but i'm excited at the same time this turntable was a gift of a viewer it's my right hand turntable it's becoming one of my favorite turntables ever and because i've spent so much time with it things like scratches are becoming more noticeable to me so we're going to gently spread this out over um, the surface of the turntable's dust cover and I'm gonna try to keep it off of the other stuff, um, but we do need to get it on all edges. I'll be probably having to to do a little touch up here and there. That's to be expected. I remember when I when I was like 16 and I had my first car and I wanted to wax it. I remember I had no idea that you should keep the wax out of the little nooks and cre crevices. And when, when I went to polish that stuff off, it was like turtle wax or something. When I went to polish it, I learned why you don't want the wax in the nooks and crannies because it takes forever to get it off. So uh, anyway, yeah, I gotta be a little careful considering everything's attached here. Uh, but first we gotta get it all spread out and I do need it to be up here. So I'm just gonna have to deal with that. Those little crevices, unfortunately. <laughs> it's just gonna be part of the part of the process here. So it feels like a little, you can tell it's like a little gritty. And uh, I gotta get over here on the right hand side as well. And I'll be getting this all over my hands too. It's just gonna happen. So what I heard and saw from other people is that you should just kind of gently uh, spread it around. Some people use like a slow buffer tool. Other people just use elbow grease and you wanna get it spread out. And you also want it to, the color of the compound to sort of change to a light gray. So we need to do some you know, work to get it, you know, pushed into those nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. And I've heard that you wanna be careful not to create too much friction so that it doesn't you know, heat up the, the, uh, the plastic material of the platter, but I don't think my feeble elbow grease could do that anyway. So I'm really not that worried. I'm really excited though, because I've heard the results are uh, amazing. So yeah, all that talk about keeping out of nooks and crannies and I've got it in every single one, which is, this is the way I roll. So let's go ahead and make sure we get this edge here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe the bulk of it off with this cloth. And then once we've got it down to just a film, we're going to use the microfiber to polish it. And that should be it. You don't have to let it cook. You don't have to let it sit on there really. You just have to get it on and then get it back off. And hopefully that does the trick. I've heard some people like to do a couple applications of this. We'll see. It's really uh, thinning up a bit. You're starting to be able to see through it. Maybe ours will only need one. That would be good. Oh man, I'm really nervous about the fact I got it back there. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty well ground into this cloth. I'm gonna fold the cloth over and uh, get some you know, unused section and really kind of wipe it. As you can see now, it's pretty much coming off the bulk of the material. 
Yeah, and I'm gonna keep doing that, keep finding uh, clean parts of the cloth, and wiping that off. Obviously, there's still quite a bit of the material left, which is good, because you want those, uh, you know, microplastics or whatever it is to really stay deep down in those scratches. That's what's gonna fix the scratch, per se. So, I'm gonna wipe this all off on all sides. And then we're gonna go to town with the micro cloth, the microfiber cloth. My wife has assured me that I am allowed to run this stuff through the washer afterwards, which is why I'm using what I would consider as my best microfiber cloth. Um, all right. Also, I heard not to use too much pressure when you're doing the this part of it as well. So I don't know if there's any validity to that or not because apparently you can re-scratch it, but at the same time, it's gonna take some elbow grease to really get it off. So now in this video, I'm not gonna do the detailing work because I'm gonna go back and make sure those crevices are cleaned out. I'm just gonna do the bulk of it because it wouldn't be very fun to watch that. But we should be able at least to see if there's any impact, you know, if we're making any, any impact here. So far, Eh, actually I didn't see much change, honestly. So we may have to do maybe a little bit more material in a second application, yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? It still looks pretty well scratched. All right, I'm gonna go through and go over it again and give it a second coat. Maybe uh, buff it a little bit more and maybe let it cook a little bit more and we'll see if uh, there's any kind of result there, any kind of positive result. Okay, so I did it big time second time around a lot more of the product a lot more elbow grease a lot more time doing it a lot more buffing a lot more everything and here are the results it looks the same that was one of the biggest wastes of time i can think of in recent history as you can see all the scuffs are still there and i've got it in all these nooks and crannies i've been working to try and get it off it's kind of gummy i'm just really disappointed now this is likely my fault um, I've seen this product do wonders for other turntables, or it could be the type of material that this dust cover is made out of because it's a special integrated type. Uh, the turntable is still awesome. I still love it, but at the same time, it would have been nice to get those scratches up. So apparently not as easy as I thought. Um, $10 investment, not huge, but at the same time, it would have been nice if it would have worked. In my case, it did not for those that it does work for. More power to you, I'm glad it does, but for, for me, it didn't work, but it was an experiment. Like I said, it was an experiment. And um, yeah, so let me know how you guys have gotten on in terms of getting scratches out of your dust covers. Thank you guys for watching. Happy record hunting, happy scratch removal. We'll see you next time.